Hey guys, it's Tater Number BHA here bringing you a new video. This is how to set up Docker for Mac. Everybody's been telling me how great Docker is and uh, that uh, it is so easy to use and you can add everything into it and it works great. Everything can be in its own container. So you know what? I finally broke down and thought I'd install Docker and start transitioning some stuff into it and see how it runs. So for starters, of course, this is my video on how to install Docker for Mac because uh, I'm installing it on an older Mac Pro. We will set up our first container as well so that we can kind of see how that works. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. Uh, for starters, of course, we're going to make sure that our uh, Mac version is compatible. Once we find out we have a valid version, uh, then the next step will be to download Docker for Mac. Uh, once we have that downloaded, then of course we are ready to install Docker for Mac. Once that's done, we're going to install our first container, which is going to be, for me, Portainer. And lastly, of course, once we get that installed, I'll show you what that looks like in action. So let's get started. All right, for starters, we got to check our Mac version. So, of course, we do that by going up into uh, the Apple icon in the corner over there, and we're going to hit About. And then it should pop up and show you the window. And, of course, if you look here at the top, uh, mine says Mac Pro, and it has mid-2010 on it. So we should be good to go to install Docker for Mac on here. Um, this should be supported. All right, so now we are ready to download Docker for Mac. So in order to be able to download that, you're going to have to log in. Uh, so, of course, we'll click on the uh, please log in to download. Um, if you don't already have a Docker account, then, of course, you can create an account for free down there towards the bottom. I already have one set up, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. All right, so now I'm back on the download page. Now I can uh, download the Docker Community Edition for Mac. So we'll just click on Get Docker. And it'll take it a second to download, um, depending on your internet connection. But it should go fairly quickly. We'll go ahead and fast forward through that. All right, so now we are ready to install Docker for Mac. So of course we double click on the uh, DMG file that we just downloaded. And of course it's gonna want us to um, just drag that into our applications directory, which is fine. We'll drop it in there. Now we're going to uh, open that up. If it prompts you and says it's from the internet, just go ahead and say, uh, you know, give it permissions to open. And it'll go through its uh, little intro menu and ask you to allow. All right, at that point, you should come up with this little menu here. I've kind of zoomed in a little bit so it's easier to see. As you can see at the top, it says Docker is starting. Uh, hang on for a moment. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and log in down here while we're waiting. So uh, that Docker ID that we used to download this with, we'll go ahead and log in with that here as well. And of course, as you can see, it already shows Docker is now up and running. So I think we have got it installed and we are ready to go. All right, so we are now ready to install Portainer, uh, which is that uh, web GUI. 
uh, for Docker and basically we install it as its own container in here. So for starters, I'm going to make sure that uh, I have a, a volume created for that. You don't necessarily have to do this. It will create its uh, own volume by default. Uh, but it, of course it gives it a generic name, which would be hard to keep up with which one's which. So this way I have one created and it will be called portainer underscore data. Makes it a little bit easier to manage. Uh, once we have that created, then we're going to go ahead and uh, install our container. As our containers are set up, uh, they will all have their own internal IP address within Docker itself. And so by doing a dash P here, we're going to do 9000 colon 9000. Basically what we're saying is we want to port forward that port so that we'll be able to access uh, this container on that port from our host IP address. So the IP address of the server that you have Docker installed, that's how we're going to access it. So uh, dash V. And as you can see, it's a var run docker dot sock colon var run docker dot sock. This is required in order for a portainer to access the system locally. Uh, so you definitely have to have this flag in there. And I'll have this whole command in the uh, description, of course, so you can just copy and paste it. Uh, dash v portainer underscore data colon slash data. This will be that uh, volume we just created. And then lastly, portainer slash portainer. That is uh, to download the image if you didn't already have it downloaded. So once you get this uh, jumbled up bunch of characters right here, we have it installed. Let's go ahead and do a Docker PS to make sure it's running. And as you can see, there it is. Been running for 15 seconds. So far, so good. So here is the web front end. Now we access this by, uh, like I said, the IP address of my host system that's running Docker, port 9000. And then, of course, for starters, it's uh, having us set up a username and create a password. So we'll do that here. Say create user. And so of course for starters it wants to know what Docker setup you want to manage. So you can actually manage remote uh, Docker instances uh, on another machine but for us we're just going to do local. Alright so we've selected local and as you can see there it reminds us that you have to have this dash V that we talked about earlier. It's listed down there which we do. So now we can go ahead and say connect and bam we have one container currently. So click on that, it shows it's running. Um, because we didn't give it a name during the setup, of course it gave it a generic name so we'll go ahead and change that to something easy to recognize. We'll just call it portainer. And then save that. So of course you can see here you can stop it, you can kill it, you can restart it, uh, you know you can uh, duplicate it. All kinds of options here that you can do from this web interface. Lots of different information here that you can use to manage your uh, Docker setup. It's a pretty neat little tool that uh, will be nice once we start adding multiple containers in here so that we can manage all of them, start them, stop them, whatever we need to do, make things a little bit easier. But that is basically the end of this video, guys. Uh, not a super long video. Just something to get you started with Docker if you're interested in doing that. Uh, fairly easy to install, as you can see, for the Mac. Um, and most of this stuff is uh, the same for other operating systems as well. Um, obviously, the commands that you use to install those containers will be the same. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. Uh, of course, for starters, we checked our Mac version to make sure it was going to be supported by Docker. Uh, once that was done, we downloaded Docker for Mac. Once we had that downloaded, we were ready to install Docker for Mac. Uh, once that was installed, we then moved over to installing Portainer, uh, our first container in Docker. And then lastly, uh, we just took a look at the uh, web interface for Portainer and showed you what that looked like in action. 
like I said guys that's the end of the video um, if you like the video please subscribe to my channel uh, if you have any questions or comments hit me up in the comments below and as always if there are any videos out there that you'd like to see that I don't already have out there let me know in the comments as well and I will see if I can't get something put together for you guys otherwise I'll see you guys around thanks Thank you.